Being greenlisted here in New South Wales is a big deal. It's a reflection of the excellent management that our staff undertake on the ground to achieve protection of the New South Wales reserve system. That's very much highlighted in both Montague Island and in Cape Byron and Oracle up in the north of New South Wales. It's a celebration of what those managers are getting right on the ground to achieve the goals that they're intending for those reserves. It's great. Maybe having a, you know, like a, one of those shrubs. Okay. So this is one of the chicks. So just feeling that it has been very well fed. So they're having a good season because there's two chicks in the box. Two chicks, yeah. I think probably the biggest thing is the way we manage the island to, to improve its habitat for seabirds and other animal species. At, and at the same time, allow the public to come and, and enjoy and enrich their experiences on the island. Previous, um, before we took over management of the island, public visitation was not allowed on the, on the island. So that was one of the big things that we did. And I think we did it really, really well because we're allowing the public to come and enjoy and experience this unique environment and at the same time put something back in to help its management. And that's, I think, one of the big successes that we've had on the island. Obviously there are other successes and, and they're in terms of working with the Aboriginal people. Um, Montague Island is called Barangooba by the Aboriginal people and the, and the Aboriginal people here have a strong connection with the island and we've been working closely with them to make sure that that's enriched and enhanced and doing anything we can possible to get them involved in our management of the island. Getting rid of the pest species on the island was one of a, a, a unique experience. I've never experienced that in my management career, um, where you can actually say, yes, we got rid of all the, all the mice and we got rid of all the rabbits and we got rid of all the goats in one location and they are gone, they're eradicated. That's very unusual. And that's made a huge difference to the ecosystems on this island. In 2006, this was Kaikou about knee deep. So the plan was to revegetate it with native vegetation. To get rid of that, we implemented a program of spray burn revegetate. So we get into the area, first of all, we'd look for all the penguins, any other seabirds that are nesting in the area, make sure that they're clear, spray the area to kill the kaikuyu, let it dry off, and then come back, burn the area completely down to ash to get rid of the biomass, come back in and replant it with vegetation. Eight years later, we have a forest. What we've done here has improved the island, made it back to what it was originally like before the kaikuyu and other introduced species had denuded the vegetation. We've brought it back to pretty much the way it would have been and how the headlands on the, on the coast around here would have been. And now we also have um, other, other bird species coming in here to nest that we've never recorded previously, such as the endangered Gould's petrel. <laughs> Cape Byron and Arakal are at the most easterly point of mainland Australia um, in the busy tourist town of Byron Bay. Um, you can come to Cape Byron and see amazing coastal and hinterland views. Um, you can see whales during the whale migration, you can see marine life like turtles and dolphins jumping out of the, of the waves. You have uh, in, a, in a location where you have a, a um, over a hundred year old um, historic lighthouse. You can see how the lighthouse keepers used to live um, learn about what Byron Bay was like in 1900 when the lighthouse was built. 
You can see amazing um, vegetation. You can enjoy the parks by walking and jogging and swimming and surfing. So look, uh, you want to lead the way? If you can go up, there's, so there's several levels. We'll go up to the second level and stop at the red line. We'll catch up with you there. We have an amazing volunteer program. We have 65 volunteers, two in the morning, two in the afternoon, seven days a week, every day of the year. And it's like meeting a local. Visitors can come and go up and have a lighthouse tour and find out about the history of the lighthouse. They can ask questions about Byron Bay, um, find out w what are good places to go. And during the whale migration, we have information about whales and activities for, for children to find out about whales. I think it's fantastic that we're still doing um, strong in, you know, caring for country here. Um, it, it's been wonderful watching um, all of our um, young people come through the ranks of working with national parks. And I think it just shows that um, we can work together and um, our, our cultures can, you know, align to manage country in a sensitive and a cultural way. We are a living culture. We love our land. The land is our mother. We belong to her. We call her Dugan. Have a go. Dugan. Our mother, we belong to her and we must respect her. She gives us everything that we need. Fresh air, food, water, everything. We have Aboriginal people working on country, caring for country, restoring country, showing us country and um, having a real meaningful say in how we manage country. That's one of the most important things for us. It's a bonus um, to because us as Aboriginal people, we look after the land as as um, it's hereditary for us when we're born that we look after the land because the land is what gives us everything that we need. The local community love our parks. We've got fantastic facilities for visitors. We've got walking tracks, we've got picnic areas, we've got fitness stations, we've got um, cafes. So with the local people and the tourists we provide facilities that are a really high standard and we get really positive feedback. So we have 1.2 million visitors come here every year and I think we've got it right in, in providing facilities that is a range of facilities that people can use. I love this place. It's a fantastic. It's the most unique place I've ever been. And particularly when you stay here overnight and you can enjoy the environment by yourself. And it's really quite a unique place. I guess uh, you know, a lot of my blood, sweat and tears is in this place. And I can see it improving all the time. Winning tourism awards, getting on the IUCN green list is just the most fantastic thing. It's a big recognition for our, all our hard work and effort that I, I personally and staff that I've worked with have put into this place. So it's, it's a big pat on the back and I'm really enjoying it. I feel, I feel honoured. What it means for me and how I feel, it it's makes our staff proud. We work as a team and we work with the local community and it makes us all proud. We can walk around with our heads up high because we, we know that what we're doing is now recognised and is right. I could just cry. <laughs> I'm excited. Um, I feel very proud that I think that we um, have honoured, you know, our culture. We have honoured um, what was thrown at us and, you know, the challenges that we've um, understanding the the processes of how non-Aboriginal people want to care for country compared to us. Um, I'm just over the moon. I, 
I, I'm still um, reeling, I guess, with just um, excitement that, you know, our park being as small as it is, can be sustainable um, in managing all the different elements that we do. So, um, you know, all, everybody needs to be congratulated because it's been a great teamwork before, you know, from everybody. Everybody makes it work. No one makes it work on their own.